What's going on everybody? Kenan here. We are hanging out today by my Aquascape ecosystem pond. And I thought I'd bring some of the snakes out for a little uh, FaceTime, a little hangout session with everybody here. I hope you're doing all well. What's up, Yordi? Uh, how are you? Who else is out there? Look at this. We got a carpet python in the water exploring underneath this really cool little log. I hope I can get it back out. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to be a very intense day. But uh, what are you going to do, man? Hey, what's going on? What's going on, Cheryl? Hello, Slater Curtis, uh, Adnan, and uh, we got Isaac Gardner, Sindra Kellogg, Burnt Spoon. What up, dude? Um, so I might have just lost a python. No, wait, there it is. It's in the water. This is mental, man. Check it out. It went up and under there. I'm going to have to extricate it, uh, maybe live. Who knows? But um, we also have Colin, the carpet python, my coastal carpet. That There are two coastal carpets. I have a male and a female. And uh, let me flip this around so you guys can see what's happening. Here is where Colin is. Uh, let's see. I thought I'd bring him out because I love to give these guys uh, a little outside time. And today is a nice day, so I thought that would be cool, right? Uh, what's up, SG, uh, SGJ? Everything's going good. Uh, everything's good. Uh, the pond, we're waiting. Uh, maybe we'll go around back later on in the video. I'll show you what's going on. But um, basically waiting for the Aquascape guys to all come in early February. So I'm going to have a hole in my backyard for a while. But in the meantime, I'm just going to let Colin kind of do his thing over here. What's up, Abby Stevens? How are you? Just having fun with the snakies. Oh, look, look at this. Look at that, guys. Look at that little face. There's a little snake. Where is it? Can you see it? Wait, there he goes. Ah, he went back under. Oh, my gosh. How cool is that, huh? We're giving this snake a little... Oh my gosh, where the heck? I'm going to have to go swimming. I don't know. He found... It's so funny. They found, you know, the one place to hide immediately in your pond. I hope it's not going to be an issue. Because it's going to be cold tonight, and I don't want to leave him out. And I wouldn't leave him out anyway. Uh, Garrett Reptiles, it's going good, man. It's going really well. Let's see what's going on with Colin. He's enjoying a little rest. Hey, Colin. There he is. See him, everybody? Oh, man, so cool, so cool. Uh, everybody's hanging out. What's up, Francisco Texiera from Portugal? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, thanks, Joe Schooler, for watching the videos. I don't mind making them. And uh, there you go. Bob McDougal. Yeah, I love Gamera, of course. But, you know, let's be real. Gamera is, you know, poor man's Godzilla. The truth. Uh, I like Gamera, though. I don't think it's as awesome as Godzilla, unfortunately. Um, I think Godzilla is really awesome. And there's all sorts of new info coming out about the new movie I'm pretty excited about. One, is Godzilla going to be burning? Yeah, we're going to see a burning phase of Godzilla. It looks that way. So I'm pretty excited because when Godzilla fought Destroyer in 1995, we all know he went into nuclear meltdown mode. What's going to happen in Godzilla King of the Monsters when he fights Peter? Should be pretty cool. I'm a nerd. Anyway, the snakes aren't doing much. Oh, wait, it's starting to slither now. Um, let's see. My goodness. Oh, yeah, you know what? I got to put my microphone on. I got a better microphone. Let's walk inside, but not for too long because I got to get back outside to um, make sure that these snakes don't go anywhere. There's a lot of mess here, folks. I've been priming this room and we're doing a lot. Kate wants it done and she's the boss. So I try and get things done. Here are the uh, little baby, we got baby leopard tortoises in here, baby cherry head tortoises for sale. Little baby cherry heads, little leopards. My baby rhino is getting much bigger. Where is he? There he is. There's a little tail right there. This is the microphone I'm about to put on so everyone can hear me better. Uh, just, you know, good times. Let's do it. Let's get it going. Where's that little connection? And uh, hold on, hold on. Hopefully this works. Works better. Uh, anyway, I'm going to flip the camera so I can see what's uh, going on with you folks. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, we got Python problems. There goes Colin. Let me see if I can get this female out. What kind of, I don't know what kind of um, situations going on in there. But I'll tell you what, with this little tripod, you guys can watch my adventures live. Here I go. Let's see what's happening. Let's see 
And this snake's a little nippy too. Up, oh, I found a snake. I found a snake. Oh, oh, I found a snake. See that? No issues at all. There she is. Is this a pretty snake or what? So she was in the water just hanging out. Let her go back out. Stay in the sun, son. <laughs> I knew I'd find her. There she goes. How pretty is that snake, huh? Awesome, man. So there we go. Look at this snake. Just already looking for a place to crawl into and kind of hide out on. But don't they look great out in their natural habitat somewhat? And this snake really seems to enjoy the water. She really seems to enjoy getting uh, busy in the water. And uh, man, thank you, Genetic Hunters. Appreciate that nice uh, donation. Man, I, I almost want to take some photos of these snakes today. Maybe I'll throw them up on my Instagram. I'll take the little photos of these guys. They're looking very photogenic today in this aquascape ecosystem pond, you see. It's not only for, you know, turtles. I like to bring all the animals out to enjoy it, get a bit of a slither around. What's up, Isuki, Isoki Stucky? When my carpet pythons mate and have babies? I don't know, maybe this season. This is a male and female, so hopefully we'll get some eggs out of them. I'm leaving them together. Um, I know my Timor pythons look like they've been uh, breeding, which is nice. What's up, Jasmine? Uh, thanks for watching my channel. Which pond is your favorite? Looking forward to seeing more of your pond go. Man, that's a tough question. That is a tough question. I mean, right now, both of these ponds out front are my favorite. I just love, there's a uh, moving water. There's little uh, habitat everywhere for the animals. But that Aquascape rec pond that we're building in the back, I think that I'm gonna spend a lot of time there. Um, definitely putting a fly river turtle in there. Some African cichlids are gonna go in there. Uh, possibly some koi as well. So that's gonna be a really, really cool pond. But it's so hard to know until it's finished and I get in there and I start dialing it in. As you know, I really love to do the dialing in. That's my favorite part. Uh, just kind of figuring out what works best. You know, as I said, I've done a lot of fun stuff over here. We've got this bamboo up back that's going to, you know, put some of the animals, uh, keep some of the animals in. It's been cold, so I have uh, a little heater here. You see that heater in the bottom? It's been cold enough to where I wanted to use the heaters. And you notice that the fish, the cichlids, kind of hang out near that heater. So that's a uh, precautionary measure in case it gets a little too cold. And these guys, um, you know, we don't want them to get too cold. The cichlids really need to stay warmer. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much, Garrick's Reptiles. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you so much for your uh, generous contribution and the kind words. Um, this place is basically my canvas, man, and I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of people that want to help out uh, from across the animal world and the, the, you know, that kind of, like the Aquascape guys have been great, and there's a bunch more to come this year, so we're really transforming the camp. It's going to become the ultimate um, I guess reptile backyard, you know, it's like what we can all aspire towards when we get older and get our own homes and really try and bring nature close to us and do a good thing. So this snake's just kind of wandering about. I'm going to pick her up and just say, easy sweetheart. I'm going to bring her over here, maybe just bring her over into the sun. And meanwhile, there's Colin. Look at Colin. He's such a handsome guy, but he's much darker than her. Uh, but they're both very beautiful. Look at her. She just keeps on trying to find some place to hide. Uh, my goodness. So um, let's see. Uh, hey, cowgirl me. Uh, yeah, the big aquascape pond critique is going to be fun, man. I can't wait. There's going to be a lot of videos, a lot of swimming widths. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff there with the whole gang. Uh, it's just going to be another place where we can do those videos. And a uh, really nice centerpiece of the facility. So how cool is it to watch this snake do her thing? I love it. Uh, this is not the snake that had the, the scale rot. Uh, this, is, this is a different uh, carpet python. Actually, the, the snake, uh, it was um, my diamond python, actually, which I can go over here in a little bit and show you if they're out. Uh, she's just doing amazing. Scale rot's pretty much gone. So I could do a follow-up for you. But look, are you going to bite me? Kind of mood are you in? Yeah, there you go. Oh, and I'm sorry, my camera skills are off because the um, camera's at the bottom of the phone. I'll try and be more, you know, conscientious of that. Uh, let's see, let's see. Hi, Donna. Tom's up in New Jersey. He's probably watching right now, so he can get your messages as well, and he might chime in when he um, 
when he types in on the comments. But yeah, so right now it's uh, kind of a nice day. It was down at 48 degrees last night. So I woke up early and I got the animals out because they've been cooped up all, for the last couple of days they've been cooped up. So I wanted to make sure they're out. Look, the snake's going right back to that little area. They just want to conceal themselves. That's what snakes like. They like to conceal themselves. Um, so I let, like to give them a chance to explore and see what's going on. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Can any, like some people are saying the microphone's not working, but it's plugged in. So you either hear me or you don't. I don't know. I'm hoping you hear me. There we go. It might just be some of you can hear me and some of you cannot. I don't know. Let me know. Hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, to Shay Russell, me, my dad, and my son love your videos. You inspire me to get some turtles. I have a baby yellow belly slider and I have an adult yellow belly slider that my dad bought me. Well, congratulations on the acquisitions and new... Uh, new household buddies really appreciate you guys all following me thanks so much uh thank you brian and cowgirl me uh some are saying it's hard to hear some saying it's not i don't know what to do i'm just talking as loud as i can into the microphone folks uh let's see uh yeah dedicated anaconda very funny you mentioned that uh we never know what we'll find uh what we'll find folks uh, i want to give another shout out to garrett's reptiles thanks for hearing me loud and clear buddy appreciate that um, right now, I'm just fixated on this snake. I think she's beautiful. And I love that she's out today exploring. Uh, man, what's up, Redneck Outdoors? Oh, uh, my gosh. Camp Cannon Army. Hey, wait a minute. That's Tom. The first swimming with we do, we plan with uh, a new anaconda, guys. So there you go. We are planning on doing a swimming with an anaconda. I'm going to be reaching out to my friend Andrew Biddle. And uh, he happens to have a rather large anaconda that we can swim with. So that's how we're going to kick off the whole new series of swimming with, uh, with the whole gang. And it'll be a lot of fun. So look for many videos to come from the new Aquascape Ecosystem Pond. And definitely keep checking into the Army channel because Tom's been posting a lot of supplemental videos that you guys won't see anywhere else on the Army channel. Uh, it's basically where we're putting just any other video uh, so we don't inundate this channel we try and stay focused on this one but the camp Kennedy army channel is gonna have so much more fun content as the weeks and months and years progress so uh, that's what's going on oh right on redneck outdoors you have a jungle carpet uh, this is a coastal although it does have some really extremely nice colorings similar to a jungle carpet similar but it is in fact a coastal what's up Josh Brindley thank you so much two pounds three pounds right there from England, I'm assuming. Appreciate your uh, support over there. Uh, Tom and I would love to get to Europe and meet some of our reptile buddies over there, see how keepers are doing things in Europe. Uh, in fact, the ecosystem pond, the recreation pond, many people started doing that in Europe first, these naturalized swimming areas. Um, so it's starting to, you know, we're hoping that uh, between uh, myself and Aquascape, we're hoping to get people more tuned in to the fact that um, you can have these ecosystem ponds to swim in rather than a chlorinated pool with those harsh chemicals. And you'll be inviting nature into your backyard, which is always a better thing because we're creating habitat. Oh, uh, look, she's just fixated with that ledge. Fixated with that ledge. Hi, Daniel Jackson. What's up, man? Uh, very cool. Seven ninety nine. Who was that? Good buddy. Uh, Wicked Wildlife. What up, mate? Great to see the snakes out and about. We're about to build outdoor enclosures and get some of ours out during the summer. So we got an Australian snake expert. Uh, we got Wicked Wildlife on the line. Uh, hey, Wicked Wildlife, check it out, man. This is a uh, coastal carpet. Much different coloration than my other coastal carpet. But I'm assuming there's a lot of variation in the subspecies. What do you think, man? Let me know. Look at this. Oh, look at this. It's going into the rocks. How cool is that? She ain't going to be able to go too far because the liner is back there. But that is a snake, folks. And here is a semi-arboreal species that's actually taken to the water to look for a place to kind of hide out. Isn't that awesome? How cool is that? Uh, yeah, man, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, what's up, Illinois sportsman? Yeah, man, um, always going to be doing stuff. Ed Blue, guys, is on, man. 
our good buddy Ed from Aquascape, the genius who's been designing their equipment and uh, all these beautiful ponds and waterscapes uh, and ecosystems, quite frankly. Uh, yeah, Ed, we're having fun. I got the snakes out. Uh, Ed and I found a really pretty scarlet snake when we were digging up over there. So that was really cool. I uh, want to shout out to SGJ for the $20 donation. Thank you so, so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. We use all this money to keep the camp going, to keep the videos flowing, um, and to be honest, to, to keep creating habitat for these animals. Um, everything uh, I earn personally goes right back into creating habitat. What's up, Stefan LeBlanc? My first live stream, and holy crap, I'm not really a celebrity, but thank you, buddy. Uh, thank you, Stefan. I think the animals are more of a celebrity than I am. I am uh, just trying to be their voice. So, how cool is this, though? This is exciting. So, it's always a new adventure here in the front yard because, you know, when you add different animals into the mix, you can really see uh, how they utilize the space. And one of the ideas that I was talking to Ed Ballou about, one of the ideas I had for the aquascape pond that we're putting in the back, the rec pond, is building some terrestrial cages, some snake cages into the landscape. Um, so that when you walk around the pond, like, oh, here's the carpet python enclosure, you know, and have it kind of built into the topography, if you will, into the landscape, so that it almost blends in that to where you don't even notice there's a cage. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of the idea. That's the next level that I really want to get to when utilizing all these amazingly talented people that are coming to help us expand the camp and these partnerships we have. Uh, meanwhile, here's the other carpet python. Um, so how cool would it be is if we're at the rec pond and we want to go look at a different species or a snake, we can wander right over and we can look at the Timor pythons and we can keep those animals centralized. It was an idea that I actually had over here. I wanted to create some kind of enclosure as you walked up. Maybe there's an enclosure kind of in this area right over here, but I decided against it because I don't want to block the view out to the pond. But I was just thinking it could be a cool habitat maybe for some kind of snake or monkey tails. Um, another species that I would like to get in the future that would go very well here with, you know, our theme of creating cool habitats would be the caiman lizards. Caiman lizards would be amazing because they're highly aquatic. It would be a fun project to get going with uh, because obviously something like this with an enclosure over it would be just monumental for that species. So lots to dream about, but hey man, I never thought that I'd get this far. So dreams do come true. Uh, as long as you stay true to yourself and uh, treat people with respect, uh, you'll have partnerships uh, that will blossom. So uh, really, really lucky for that. But anyway, let's see what some of you are all saying. Um, we are looking here. Thanks, little shiner for your seven fly. Appreciate that. Uh, but it's so funny, Colin just decided he wants to kind of hang out by the stacks of hatchy grass. That's what Colin wants to show. Oh look, is he kind of laying in wait? Is he laying in wait for some aquatic animal to walk by and he can reach out and get a bite to eat? I don't know. But I mean, you can see how that beautiful coloration really helps him out. He does kind of, it breaks up his uh, Philly. What's up Marcus Johnson? I love Philly. I've always hung out in Philly riding my BMX bike down on South Street and uh, lots of good friends out there in King of Prussia. So I know Philly very, very well. And uh, you know, you gotta get out there and ramp up to John every once in a while. So uh, there you have that. What do we got over here? I just don't want the snake to go over by this electrical stuff. Um, I think I might kind of make like a little bamboo uh, hiding area for all the electricity. Uh, and again, the, the reason there's all these cables is because it's been so cool that I really wanna make sure that the cichlids are okay in this pond. Now, sometimes I'll run water. You can see I got a hose coming out. And if you watch the channel enough, you know that water comes out of the ground at 72 degrees here. That's enough to keep these fish healthy uh, when it's cold out, air temps have dropped. So I've added this uh, water heater that I got from our good friends at Angel's Hatchery. Uh, you can reach out to them and you can uh, order one of these. It's, it's, they get really hot though. Make sure that you have enough um, volume of water because it can heat a five gallon bucket to 110 degrees. So be careful. You don't want to roast your animals. Uh, Yadel Cordova, 
What advice would you give a reptile breeding business as a way of income? Woo! If you want to become a millionaire in reptiles, start out with $2 million and you'll have 1 million in no time. You know, listen, I primarily focus on the videos. Uh, that's what I'm good at. That's what I come from. Television background, educational background. Um, obviously, I breed these animals. I do sell them. But if I had to rely on the animals alone for business, it would be extremely difficult. Um, I don't want to have so many animals that it becomes hard work taking care of them. Does that make sense? I want to enjoy the animals I have, and I am more interested in creating habitats. And if the fruits of my labor uh, are rewarded by these certain animals that I really enjoy working with, them reproducing, and I can sell the offspring as a way of supplementary, uh, supplemental way of paying for the many things that I'm trying to do here, then that's great. Um, I've seen guys like Ty Park who are amazing. Uh, they have the means, but Ty is not making money for himself off that farm. He's actually putting it right back into the farm. It can be sustainable for the farm. Very, very difficult to make it sustainable as an income. However, there are ways to do it. There are people that are successful at doing it. Um, so it's not how I sustain myself. I sustain myself a little bit of supplemental breeding, but mostly with YouTube videos and sponsorships. And basically that's what we're trying to do. Um, but anyhow, so that's my advice. And then someone else asked the question as well. Oh my goodness. B Hutch 216. Um, thank you so, so much for the generous contribution. Um, he says his family loves watching our videos. Please continue educating the younger generation to keep up the great work. Um, humbled, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate your kindness and generosity. Um, we will keep going as long as I draw breath. We really love it. As long as there's a YouTube or social media that we can get the word out, uh, Tom and I are committed to this long term. And, you know, ideally I'd love to get up there and have uh, millions of followers. Um, but I'm like a tortoise. I'm slow and steady. And uh, as long as you guys join us on this journey, we're happy. So we're, we're going great. We're getting close to 400,000 subscribers. And I remember being at 50,000 thinking that was insane. So uh, I say it once, I'll say it again. Uh, we're not the fastest growing channel, but I do believe we have a really great um, following of really well-meaning, animal-loving people. And uh, that's more than I could ask for. Um, really appreciate everyone's positivity and support. Uh, that's amazing. Um, so that's, that's really cool. Thank you so, so much for that. Uh, let's see what's going on over here. Uh, continue moving along. I think there was another generous donation. Uh, again, SG, SG, yeah, I forgot how to say that. Sorry. SGJ, thank you. What's your favorite turtle species? Ah, good question. Good, good question. What is, I'm going to turn this microphone. Hold on. Oh, maybe not. Can you guys hear me still? I hope you guys can hear me. Um, what is my favorite turtle species? Whew, that's tough, man. Um, let's see. Uh, I love snapping turtles. I love the big head turtles. I love fly river turtles. Um, those are some of my favorites. Um, gosh, so many turtles are popping in my head. I can't possibly name just one. Um, I love Nostradamus. I don't think I have one favorite turtle species. I, if I were nailing it down, I, I just don't think I do. They're all so interesting to me. Um, but I, I think because it was, was the first turtles I was introduced to as a boy, snapping turtles, because they're so prehistoric, they look like Gamera, who I was talking about earlier this, um, this, this you know, video. So I, I like those. And I missed a couple of really good questions. Um, let me see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's so funny. Some people can hear me well. Some people can't. I think it depends on where you're listening from. Uh, Beast Boy, 50, 550. Love the show. Uh, wishing you could have your own show on Animal Planet and Nat Geo Wild. Have you named the juvenile rhinos yet? No, I haven't uh, named the juvenile rhinos. As far as Animal Planet or Nat Geo, Tom and I have been very close. Uh, we even had a greenlit show back in 2011, which I walked away from because, um, to be perfectly honest, I didn't want to get involved. Uh, they wanted me to leave Tom out of it, and uh, the production company weren't really um, honest. And uh, that's when Tom and I got busy on doing this. 
and I've never been happier. Never, never been happier. We, um, with television, you have to answer to and cater to what the executives want you to say. Uh, they want to manufacture all kinds of drama. That's just not something I'm interested in. Um, I think you guys know that I try to keep the sensationalism uh, toned down. I think the animals are sensational enough, and I think if, for, if you are a good journalist or a good storyteller, you capture moments as they happen. So if that means that we have to have these videos for a few months and then all of a sudden we go work with a croc or you know, we're doing some exciting animal work and that's, that's what happens, something exciting happens then, so be it. I don't want to manufacture too much drama. I think the swimming wits are about as sensational as we get because we're taking these animals and we're getting in the water with them. Um, but I'm not trying to get bit. I'm not trying to say they're super dangerous. Um, I think if, if my, if my instincts are correct, I think that's why most of the folks enjoy coming to this channel because we're having an honest dialogue about these animals. Um, we're trying to be honest. Um, you know, if something does get exciting, oh yeah, we'll ramp up the drama, but we're not going to make up the drama. If that makes any sense. Um, I don't want to put myself, my friends or my animals in any kind of stressful situation. There you have it. Uh, let's see. Stephen LeBlanc, thank you so much from uh, California, it seems. Uh, thank you for the $5. We really appreciate that, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, my goodness. So uh, let's see who else is out there. Uh, hi, Robert Wheeler. Thanks for the hello. Um, I just love how Colin is still in this area. He hasn't moved. And if you look, I don't have a name for the female. I'm taking suggestions. Uh, what's up from Finland? Globalo, Globo 1337, what's up? Uh, Max is doing well. He's inside sleeping. He's an old cat, so he's getting a little love. Oh, yeah, let's get up and I think the snakes will be okay for a minute, right? What do you think? Ah, what's the worst that can happen? I'm going to take you guys really quickly. It's going to be a fast one, okay, because I got these snakes out here. I don't want anything to happen to them or them to leave. So I'm going to just show you the progress. The progress is pretty much just like the video. Um, we're going to leave this door open and hopefully get a direct signal. I've been painting today and uh, we got to clean the house that's, that's coming up too. But here it is. I'm going to flip it, guys. So that's the progress. Um, not much progress. <laughs> so there you go. Um, just basically, um, you know, I got a lot of work to do. Um, but I cleaned up a little bit and... Um, cleaned off some of the rocks. The rocks look really cool. They're going to get a really nice algae on them. Uh, yeah, Trap House uh, 459. Right, because we have 80 to 100 Aquascape certified contractors coming down, or CAC certified Aquascape contractors coming down in February, the first week of February. Tom's got his ticket. He's coming back. They're going to descend on my backyard and completely transform it. So you see the different levels here. We've got some topography, some landscape changes. Why not a cage up there with a snake? Or over here is maybe a lizard cage. Um, it's going to be pretty nuts. So again, we'll be able to swim and photograph these animals in a very naturalistic environment. Well, as naturalistic as possible. Um, but once this pond matures, guys and girls, it's going to really become uh, a, a ecosystem unto itself. And that's what I really appreciate about the folks at Aquascape. You know, when you talk with Ed, you learn quite a bit. Uh, he's very knowledgeable. Uh, he is a, you know, he does have a degree in uh, aquatic sciences. So he's the guy I'm going to be listening to. Uh, let's go back out front. I'll show you. You see those, the rocks that are in that wreck pond? Eventually, they're going to look like this. They're, this is a mature pond. This pond's now a year old. And look at how this pond turned out. It is gorgeous. When you get down here and you look at it, the rocks have a nice thin veneer of algae on them. Um, I personally like that. I like that it looks like a natural habitat. But look at how clear the water is. It's insane. So it's working extremely well. Um, so we are basically just scaling that all up. So it's going to be scaled up in the backyard. That's going to become the centerpiece of Camp Kennan for a while. But I've got big plans. Oh, yes, you're going to love it. Somebody got his crocodilian permit. It's going to be fun. My class two is back, folks. So I'll be able to keep certain species of crocodilian. 
which will be awesome. And uh, I'm happy about that. So we're going to be able to do a lot of fun stuff. There'll be a lot of new um, videos coming out, and I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing everything and how you don't have to break the bank to do it. Uh, yeah, Mini Monster Island. There he is, Christopher Supper. I knew. We talked about Godzilla earlier. Let's discuss a little bit with Christopher Supper, Supper my buddy from Long Island. Um, so we may see a Godzilla in meltdown mode in this new King of the Monsters movie coming out here. Uh, it's going to be amazing. I think Mothra might transfer the life energy she has. Uh, it'll be kind of cool to see Godzilla working with another monster, uh, another titan, if you will. So I'm really excited about that. There's even theories that maybe Godzilla dies fighting King Ghidorah so that in the next one, Godzilla vs. King Kong, maybe it's his offspring who's not quite as large and that's how Kong and Godzilla will be able to fight and have it be somewhat of a fair fight because let's be honest, Godzilla at about 420 feet tall fighting King Kong, atomic breath, I don't care how smart that ape is, Godzilla's going to win. Uh, anyway... That's what's going on. We just did a live video, everybody. I hope we had fun. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Everyone joining, uh, joining on now. If you guys are just joining now, don't fret. You can stop it and start from the beginning and listen to my ramblings over the course of the last 31 minutes. Wow, time just does fly by when you're hanging out here with me here at the camp in the front yard. I want to say uh, thanks to all of you who contributed. Thanks for all of you who are watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to go to Patreon.com if you guys would like to help support the camp. Shout out to our friends at Aquascape for building these awesome Aquascape ecosystem ponds that we can have these videos at. And more importantly, that the animals can thrive in. Also want to say go on over to Camp Cannon Army Channel. There's going to be a lot of cool video there that you may not see anywhere else. And of course, would you do me a favor? I've got it in my head that I can get us to 100,000 on Instagram. Will you guys help out? Go over to Instagram, follow along at Camp Cannon there, uh, and there you have it, everybody. That's what's going on. Like and subscribe. If you couldn't hear me, and that's what I used to do when I was on television to mess with people. Hey, how you doing? It's up on the phone. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with your smartphones or computers. I'm just a knucklehead. Thank you so much. I will see you all soon. I'm going to just kind of take some photographs of these snakes and throw them up on the old Instagram. So uh, head on over there in a little while to see what I post. Thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate you all. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Sophia Tiffany Tan from Singapore. See you, everybody. Later, Jenny Eden. Bye, David Pina. Woohoo! Layla Saeed. So long. Dominic.